Bob Cusack with The Hill, back with Mark Penn, talking about the new Harvard-Harris polling. As we always do, Mark, uh, what's the one word uh, that captures uh, your new polling data? Tie. Tie. I think there's no question. Tie. Not as in Thai food, not as in Thai around my neck, <laughs> but Thai as in even Steven. Um, you've, you've, and this you've ball, got we, we come out of the one, gate. Right? I trump up one, but then when you press the leaners, it's really like half a point. And then when you round it, it comes out a tie. So this is as close a uh, race after Labor Day as I've ever seen. Huh. I think the, the atmospherics really continue to favor Trump. Uh, but uh, hmm. but I think that uh, I was, you know, but tie is what we got. And and tie does tie go to the former president? I think I think the 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 real question is does that mean in the swing states, the president which are unlike New York and California, that really he's about two points ahead in those states and you know maybe has enough to win. Okay, um, now obviously you know the 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 saying about it, it's the economy, stupid. But looking at these numbers. The economy, people not pleased with the economy, but Harris is right in the ball game. What does that tell you about this race? Well, they must not be voting purely on the economy right now or on the issues, right? They have to be voting on something else because when you look at it, you have, you know, more than 60 percent unhappy with the economy, 48 percent saying their personal condition is worsening. Uh <clears throat> You you're just you just see I mean, again these independents that are splitting down the middle overwhelmingly unhappy Latino voters in particular are unhappy with the economy if if Trump had effectively mobilized his economy voters he should be two or three points ahead you know easily so then then obviously right now this election may in the end of the day be about the economy but it must be about some other things as well right now or it wouldn't be this close. What is the difference between Harris and Biden? It looks like from your data, um, the black vote uh, is is getting stronger, but the Latino vote, not so great for Democrats or not as great as they want it to be. Well, there's a big difference between Harris and Biden. There's about a five point difference. <laughs> right. And, and that five point difference is core Democratic groups who, after the debate, had really become uh, disenchanted with Biden and his ability even to serve as president of the United States for another four years. And of course, their fear was that Kamala Harris might actually become president. <laughs> so in, in the irony of ironies here. So uh, I, I do think that he's at a job rating of 42 and a personal rating of around the same. And she's at a job rating of 47 and a personal rating of 47. So she's got about five points on on uh, on President Biden, uh, and and that's really what has come from the, this tremendous kind of opening salvo that she's had in her campaign through the convention. We have the big ABC debate next week. Um, what do you think is the most effective strategy based upon your numbers for both candidates to go after one another? Well. The most effective strategy for Trump is to do all the things that he generally doesn't want to do and probably won't. Uh, and, and that is keep his temperament down. Uh, she's winning on temperament. Reassure voters you're the experienced president ready to take on the world and bring, bring inflation down. Uh, and, and look, she's just going to have to tear into Trump show that she can be, you know, aggressive as a candidate uh, and, uh, and you know, kind of main, you know, kind of get out of this kind of uh, uh, this this web of issues over the issues uh, by, by just overstepping them and pretending they don't exist, which I think is, is what was what her plan is. You know, she she really, you know, she's at this top. It's a little trickier for her because. 
you know, her her debate attacks have sometimes been successful and sometimes have failed failed miserably. Um, and uh, you know, Trump he goes right to the personal in response. She was a bad vice president and she's a moron and he's gonna go, she's a foul. You know, this could really degenerate into a really like <laughs> Like fifty fifty, this degenerates yeah. into like like one of the worst presidential debates we have ever seen. <laughs> worse than uh, Trump Biden uh, the first time in twenty twenty. Uh, I mean that was pretty bad too. But but yeah. but you could really you know it'll be worse. You know they could really just hammer at each other here personally. <laughs> Uh, do you do you think there's a lot? You, know, do you think the ratings will be high for it? Uh, I would. Uh, it's it's a little hard to say. I think they will be. I think the stakes will be high, regardless of what the ratings are. Uh, which is to say, a lot of voters have made up their mind. There's more than two thirds of the voters. You've made up your mind. Do you really want to sit down with a bowl of popcorn and watch this thing for ninety minutes? Uh, but. You've got about a third here who say that they're they're still interested, or I think nineteen percent is still thinking about their choice, and about a third of independents. And I think a lot of those voters will tune in because this is their only opportunity, most likely, to see the two candidates facing facing off and and have to kind of without aids and without teleprompters have to convince them that they should vote for them. The Vice presidents, uh, looks like, you know, Walls is about even from your data. Uh, Vance is a little bit underwater, I think maybe four points. Does that, does that matter? Well, no. I mean, <laughs> vice presidents classically don't matter. Uh, they provide mm -hmm. a lot of entertainment during the summer, uh, guessing games, criticism games. Look, uh, I think Walls was, was signaled that uh, she is not going to walk too far away from her left-wing base. And Shapiro, to me, would have locked up this race, would have gotten Pennsylvania, was a logical choice for all of those reasons. I think we can't really tell va about Vance, because it's like, if you and me liked Vance, he probably was the wrong choice, okay? Because <laughs> Vance's appeal is that he has an appeal with working class voters that, that people like you and I wouldn't really understand. And so it doesn't matter that he's down a few points nationally. The question is, is he getting to those critical voters that really are the swing vote for Trump? That we don't really know. Good. What, uh, you know, in, in 2016, basically six in 10 people voted. In 2020, it was two out of every three. What do you think, uh, it seems like both sides are now energized. Obviously, Democrats were not energized at all on, with Biden. What do you think the turnout's going to be this year? Uh, I think it's a little early, you know, <laughs> to, to really say for sure. I mean, I can't imagine it's going to vary much. A lot of the increases turnout was from mail-in ballots that made voting easier. Right. Um, you know, I, I I think that we're going to stay at kind of generally high turnouts coming in, coming into this election. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't see any change in that. I think I think there are probably the one difference is if you're in a swing state here, people don't realize that there's huge differentials in turnout between the swing states and the non swing states. That in many of the swing states, turnout is 70 percent plus and there's not capability for them to go much higher. And in the other states where it really doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. <laughs> and okay. and right. there is such a huge difference today with targeted campaigns in terms of the advertising that you get and see. It's like here in D.C., I don't see, you know, I don't see any political mm -hmm. advertising. Right. right. Uh, whereas if we were si if we were sitting there uh, mm -hmm. in Georgia, you know, I'm sure we'd be saying, like, how do I get away from these political ads? <laughs> right. All right. <laughs> Um, third parties, uh, we've seen RFK Jr. endorse Trump. Uh, we have a lot of other third parties running Jill Stein, Cornell West. Are, are they going to make it the difference? Uh, in the polling right now, it doesn't look like they're making much of a difference. I think you could argue that Trump was maybe behind two points, 
uh, a week or two ago and that the coming out of the convention and that Kennedy kind of helped him gain a point so that it brought it back to what we have as even. Uh, and then, and then, you know, we run the horse races with Jill Stein and Cornell West and whatever. And we would think it would make a difference, but it just doesn't doesn't really seem to be making a difference because a, a lot of the Trump voters hate everybody. Uh, right. And so when they get a kind of a third choice, some of those Trump voters come out. And that that's why a lot of those hate everybody people were over with Kennedy. Uh, and then the question is, who do they hate more? And uh, and so it doesn't seem to be making a big difference. Uh, um, I think Kennedy's Kennedy's dropping out though was significant. Mm -hmm. uh, what's you know, which is why the Democrats are keeping him on the ballot. <laughs> right, right, that's right. In some key states uh, such as Michigan, um, Harris's job approval is forty-seven percent. That is, you know, that is higher than when uh, when she was not the nominee, which, uh, as you pointed out, was under forty percent. Um, Biden's at forty-two. Um, it's interesting that Harris has been, you know, slowly but surely adopting some policies that are different than Biden's, including on uh, tax policy. Um, but she's not doesn't seem like she's getting blamed for the economy. Is, this, is there a Teflon type of uh, uh, thing going on with her? Well, I don't know if it's Teflon or it's like a pearl emerging from from an oyster. <laughs> I, uh, you know, th there's like she's a new shiny object, right? And I think that 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 you know part of the question here is okay: is she responsible for what happened in Afghanistan? She says she was the last person in the room. Is she responsible for the inflation? Didn't she pass the the, the tie-breaking votes on a lot of these bills that are for which people believe uh, uh, you know the inflation? Uh, was the cause of the inflation? I mean, uh, has Trump made that stick? No, right? Does he have an opportunity to do that in the debate? I guess he does, right? And uh, I, I think that what she's been doing is pretending that Trump is the incumbent and she is the change candidate. And consequently, in this poll, she wins change and she wins, uh, she wins temperament. And uh -huh. Trump wins the issues of fighter and get things done. So right. do you want somebody with the right temperament who is a change candidate or do you want a fighter who will get things done? And do you think that's uh, that is interesting that she's viewed as the change candidate, even though she's the incumbent um, and part of part of the ticket, obviously, and now the nominee? Um, do you think foreign policy will matter? Afghanistan's, I think, definitely going to come up next week in the debate. Um that was, uh, you know, such a tragic debacle um, that Biden has been very defensive on. But does that matter as far as voters? Well, what matters is being commander in chief. Uh, and I think that's slightly different from foreign policy. Do the uh, do, do the issues of whether or not we fund Ukraine, put restraints on their weapons or negotiate with uh, Putin, are they likely to be major issues? No. Is there a general concern out there that the next president has to be able to deal with Putin, you know, uh, China, Iran, in a, in a, in a world where, where having a treaty on, on global warming is not going to be you know, the, the, the be all and end all of foreign policy? So uh, I do think this notion of who's a better diplomat and who is a better commander in chief will play in the election, even if it's even if you don't see that among the top issues. OK, okay. Um, as far as um, media, media interviews, um, your polling shows that it's you know, obviously Harris is not. She's basically done a couple, um, obviously one big one on CNN, um, but she hasn't done a lot. But that's not hurting her as far as your polling is concerned that they people say that um, a majority say they they you know, they've heard enough from her and they've heard a lot from Trump. They, they, they don't want to hear <laughs> too much more from Trump. What do you make of that? Well, I, I, I make that the average person would rather watch a, a ball game than listen to a political <laughs> candidate for 90 minutes. Uh, <laughs> and, and so so we may be a little bit more. uh uh, concerned about it than they are. And, you know, I asked them what they thought about the views. And 
I'm not so sure that there are views that the more she speaks, it's going to be much different from what people think her views are. Uh, and she was very strong on abortion. Uh, she was weak on China. Uh, and, and I don't know that she's going to change any of these basics. They really did have more of a view of her, even if she hasn't given a lot of interviews, that I don't think she wants to go in and correct, right? Um, and uh, and Trump, as you said, they, they you know, Trump's attitudes are pretty hard and fast. Now, this is a strength and weakness for her. Her ratings have really shot up from 38 to 47 quickly. But then nine points of, of people doesn't really know all that much about her. So a really good, ne you know, and a really good negative campaign or some shots could have a lot more impact on her. A, a bad word salad during the debate could really have an impact on her uh, in the way that it's not going to matter for Trump. Biden, when he was the expected nominee, uh, routinely said that he, he was going to beat Trump and 50 people, 50 Democrats could beat him and I'm going to beat him like a drum. Um, Harris has adopted, I think, a, a shrewder strategy, basically calling uh, herself uh, and the campaign the underdog. Uh, is is that you think that's the, the better move? And uh, that's part one of my question. Part two is, is this going to be a referendum on Trump or, or Harris? And does that decide it? Uh, well, I, I think that's interesting. The, the uh, I think there's no question that always you want to be the underdog. Uh, you always want to win an election on the last day of the election as the surprise upset candidate. Um, I think that she's played a very interesting game of making Trump out the incumbent. Uh, and, and I think that, the, you know, consequently, this is a little bit more of a referendum on Trump. Um, because if it weren't a referendum on Trump, he would he should be ahead by another two, three points at least, right? Right. Now, maybe our polling is off, and maybe he is, right? Because because the underlying dynamics of the race kind of kind of clearly favor Trump, um, and and this notion that she could be kind of gauzy, and the attitude was, look, don't worry, it worked for it worked for Obama, <laughs> you know, it'll work for you. Uh, uh, well, we're going to see whether that's tested. I, I myself have an article just today uh, about that, you know, our presidential campaigns, they should have at least three debates, one of them on foreign policy. Uh, and and we should we should have policy papers from the candidates on major policies. And we should have uh, the press interviews every couple of days. And that th these things are not optional. They're part of uh, of, of having an informed electorate, because an uninformed electorate, that's that's not a republic or a democracy. The idea wasn't just to catch anybody who doesn't know anything and say, sign here, and you've now voted. The idea was to have informed voters whose choices, right, dictate the directions of a republic. And, and to the extent that I think our institutions, uh, the press and, you know, was what used to be the League of Women Voters and became the uh, presidential com debate commission have collapsed in their purposes. I think that is really to the detriment of the voters here who like it or not, whether they'd like a sports game more than a, another presidential debate, they, they have to be, you know, informed. And I'll also mention some very interesting videos. My friend Steve Bomber has done uh, with, with some help uh, from us to, to really call just the facts and they're 15 minute videos telling you about the budget, telling you about the healthcare system, telling you about immigration, because none of the campaigns really are doing a particularly good job of telling <laughs> the voters about the facts. Absolutely. Well, we, fascinating uh, polling. Listen, this is, as you say, an extremely tight race that could move on the last day, could go down to the wire. Who knows? And of course, with the debate, everything could change next week. Any closing thoughts, anything I didn't miss you want to tackle? Well, I just want to talk about our young people for a second. Sure. Um, I mean, we've known for a long time that that when I just asked the question, are you more with Israel or Hamas, that it's 80-20, that it's but it's split 50-50. Uh, it's split 50-50 with uh, younger people and like almost 90-10, something like that, with, with older people in Israel's favor. But now we had some questions on Venezuela. And 
And in those questions on Venezuela, most people thought the election was stolen. And I worked in Venezuela for many years, and I've seen them. And it was stolen. The U.S. government's official position is that this was a stolen election. Well, darn if half of the people 18 to 24 don't think it's a stolen election <laughs> and seem to support Maduro. So <laughs> what is going on with our young people? I, Even if I thought that there was a a... a a Palestinian cause that it somehow communicated effectively to young people. How the heck did half of them support a a dictator like Maduro, who is claiming he won an election that he lost? What is going on? That that is pretty strange. And but you're right. Uh, the the dynamic on the young voters on Israel is compared to, to older voters is just very dramatic from your poll. It is, but it looks like they have a lot to learn about a lot. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> well, uh, until next month. Thanks, Mark. Thank you, Rob.